Hey, what's up guys? It's Sarah from Rusty Dog and Co. And in this video, I'm going to share with you five tools that I've purchased for this workshop over the last couple of years that I kind of regret buying now. Also, as a bonus, I'll throw in five tools that I would totally buy again. Alrighty guys, let's get into it. So let me just start off first by saying these are all just my own personal opinions. Obviously, everyone has different preferences and different workflows. So some of these tools that I might not love might work perfectly fine for someone else. I'm also a person that mainly does woodworking, building furniture out of wood with the occasional DIY home improvement project. So that's sort of what I'm basing my opinion off of for these tools. Alrighty, let's talk about the first tool that I regret buying. All right, so first up is this Craig AccuCut track saw system. Now, the purpose of this thing is basically to be able to take whatever brand circular saw that you have and then fit it onto this little piece here and it'll allow it to run onto this provided track so that you can essentially turn your saw into a track saw for making quicker cuts. Now, I got this thing because right now I don't have a track saw, but I'm pretty much breaking down sheet goods for almost every single project, so I just thought it would save me a lot of time. Now, the advantage of this type of system is it's a little bit cheaper than buying a separate dedicated track saw. However, I think this thing just has a little bit too much play in it, and I find that I don't get very accurate cuts when I'm using it which is pretty ironic given that the name is literally AccuCut. Anyways, now maybe it would work a little bit better on a different type of circular saw, but for the one that I have at the moment, it's just a little too inaccurate for me. I also don't love that anytime I wanna use my circular saw for something else, I have to remove this piece. I just feel like it makes more sense to just have a dedicated track saw so that when I wanna use my circular saw for other things, when I need it, I can do that. Now, I regret getting this thing mainly because I should have just put that money toward a standalone track saw with hopefully some sort of desk collection, and that's probably what I'll end up doing. All right, now let's move on to the second tool that I regret buying. The second tool that I regret buying for my workshop are these Harbor Freight ratcheting bar clamps. I really don't love these things, guys. But here's the thing, when you're getting started with building and you don't have a lot of tools already, it's really hard to justify spending a ton of money all at once on a hobby that you don't even know that you're gonna stick with. And clamps are just one of those things where it just seems like you can never have enough. Now, when I was getting started, I bought a lot of these Harbor Freight clamps because it allowed me to get the most amount of clamps for the least amount of money. But as you can see by all of the tape I have to have on pretty much every single one of them, they haven't held up well over the years. Parts are always falling off of them and they want to bend and just to be honest, they're just not quality clamp. And I wouldn't buy these again and I definitely haven't bought any more since. Now, if I could do it again, I would probably buy a few uh, quality clamps to get started. Uh, maybe I wouldn't be able to get as many, but hopefully they would hold up a lot better over the years. Now, I will say this, in the past couple of years, Harbor Freight has come out with some different brands of clamps that seem to be a little bit better quality than these. And I've been slowly trying some of those clamps out to see if they're any good and they seem to be uh, much better. But these clamps here, yeah, I won't be buying any more of these. The third tool that I regret buying for this workshop is this moisture meter. Now listen, I'm not trying to say that moisture meters aren't important when it comes to woodworking. It's incredibly important to make sure that the wood you're working with is dry enough before you begin working with it. What I'm saying is that I wish I wouldn't have bought this one in particular. Now, when I was first looking for a moisture meter, I decided to go with one that was penless because I didn't like the idea of poking holes in good wood. So I decided to get this one in particular. And to be honest, I'm just not sure how accurate it is. 
I think if you want a really accurate moisture meter, then you probably need to get one like this one here. The downside of the really high quality moisture meters is that they're pretty expensive. We're talking a couple hundred of dollars. So for me, for right now, I just make sure that I get the majority of my lumber from someone who I trust, who I know kiln dries that lumber to the proper moisture levels. And that makes this whole thing kind of unnecessary around here. Okay, so for this item, I was a little unsure if I wanted to add this thing to the list, but to be honest, I think I'm still a little bit bitter from the last time that I used it. Now, when I first saw this thing, I thought, wow, this thing would be so great to have. I mean, if you've ever had to apply a lot of adhesive or caulking or silicone to anything, then you know that the hand can start to cramp after a while. So I thought this thing would be a great addition to the workshop. Now, the reason I kind of regret buying it though is that A, I just don't use it a ton. For most caulking jobs that I do, I'm still grabbing for just a regular old caulk gun, uh, just because it's a little bit lighter weight than this one is. And B, uh, on a couple different occasions, this thing has actually caused the back of the tube to explode out and just create a huge mess for me. Uh, it could totally be user error there, but after I've cleaned up silicone and adhesive goo all over this thing on several different occasions, uh, I just find myself avoiding using it now. So did I need to buy it? No, probably not. All right guys, so the last item that I regret buying for this workshop are these drawer front installation clamps. Now, let me just say that I love having a bunch of different jigs or clamps or things in the workshop that just make installation of things go that much smoother. I've acquired quite a few of them over the years and I build a lot of cabinets and that means that I install a lot of drawer fronts. I've used these things in the past, they do work well, but what I found is that when it comes time for me to install drawer fronts, I always just seem to find a different approach to getting them installed rather than reaching for these. And I don't know why that is. Maybe it's the amount of time that it takes to set them up. It's not that long, but I'm always just uh, attaching them in some different way. So I will say that I regret buying these, not because they don't work well, just because I never use them. All right, now that we've gotten all that negativity out of the way, let's talk about five tools that I would definitely buy again. First up on my list is my handy little pocket hole jig from Craig. Now, this tool right here was a game changer for me in my early days of building because it helped me overcome the idea of how I could join two pieces of wood together without having to master some of the more advanced woodworking joinery techniques. I think this is an incredibly powerful tool for beginners because it helps them get started. And to me, that's one of the most important parts. You just have to start. Go create something. It doesn't have to be perfect. I know online today, everything seems like it's perfect, but everyone had to start somewhere. And this tool right here was instrumental in helping me get started. Now, as I got more advanced in my uh, hobby, I learned when to use this and when not to use this. But this tool right here is still something that I use on almost every single project that I do uh, today. So I definitely think this is worth investing in. Now, they do have a couple different versions. I've had this one right here for a long time and it still gets the job done. So 100% would buy this again all day, every day. Well, I told you about some clamps that I hate in this video. I might as well tell you about some clamps that I love too. These are the Pony Jorgensen Parallel Clamps and I do love these things. These are some good clamps. Uh, I've had these things for a couple of years now. I'm always reaching for them if I have a glue up to do or something I need to clamp up where these will work for it. They just, they're easy to use. They feel like they're made of good quality material. They don't bend. I honestly have nothing bad to say about these clamps. So would I buy them again? Oh yeah. In fact, I want to buy a lot more. <laughs> 
All right, guys, so the next item that I would definitely buy again would be some of these spacing shims. Now, these little things are called handy shims, and boy, do they live up to their name. Now, I am not exaggerating when I tell you that I use these things on every single build that I do these days. They are just so handy at getting the exact spacing that you need. Um, I use them typically for setting up like the spacing between drawer fronts and cabinet doors, but I also just use them a lot in the workshop for other things. Um, and they're just, they're really good for, like I said, setting that spacing. In the past, I used to just use scrap wood. If I needed a quarter inch space, I would get a quarter inch piece of plywood but that plywood is not always a quarter of an inch. This does a much better job and just make sure you're a little bit more accurate. Now you can get these things and they come in a pack of the, with several different sizes from a quarter inch down to one thirty second of an inch. They're not expensive. I have bought a couple different packs of these now, so would I buy these again? Definitely. All right, the next thing I'd buy again if given the chance would be this little countersink bit from Amana Tools. Now, I have to admit that I put off buying this countersink bit for a long time. Just because the idea of spending $40 on a drill bit seemed bonkers to me. But I have bought quite a few countersink bits uh, so far. A lot of them have broken on me and I can confidently say that none of them compare to this countersink bit. I love how you can adjust the depth on this one so that you can do different size countersinks. I also love that it has this little uh, non-marring stopper piece here so that way every single hole that you drill will be that exact same depth. Uh, it just gives you that really consistent look. So I think that the, the quality and functionality of this particular countersink bit kind of make up for that higher price tag. I've had this one for several years now. It's holding up really well, so I might not have to, but if I did, I'd spend $40 on this again. The next item that sort of won me over over the last couple of years is this woodworking tape from X Fasten. Now, I use this stuff in the workshop all of the time. It's really great for like attaching router templates or if I need to attach something to my work surface and hold it down tight, uh, if I need to attach scrap blocks to something so I can clamp it up. It literally has so many different functions in the workshop. Uh, I have found that this stuff has the perfect stickiness, if you will. Uh, it's just really a, a good stickiness so that it holds it down really tight without any sort of movement. But then when you want to remove the piece and remove the tape from the piece, uh, it's really easy to take this tape off. It doesn't leave behind any sort of residue like some other tapes I've used in the past. I have used lots of different double-sided tapes. I've used carpet tape. In my opinion, this stuff is the best. All right, so I know I said I was gonna give you five tools that I'd buy again, but here's the thing. When I was making this list, I realized that there's a lot more than five items that I've purchased for this workshop that I truly love. So I'm gonna throw in a little bonus item for you guys, because I'm nice like that. That bonus item is this fast cap tape measure. Now, this is my daily tape measure. I think I have like three of these things scattered throughout the workshop. And I like this thing for a couple of different reasons. The first reason is that when you're measuring something, it actually will show the measurement on both sides of the tape. I just find that really helpful uh, to be able to easily see no matter uh, which side of the tape I'm looking on. The second reason I really like this tape measure is that it shows the measurements down to the 16th of an inch. Now, some people take a lot of pride in being able to read a tape measure and in knowing exactly what every little tick mark on the tape measure is. I could care less about that. I know what they are, but when it comes to my uh, workflow, I just find it's so much easier to just be able to easily read uh, that it's 11 16 or, or whatnot on the actual tape measure. Just think it makes uh, things go a little bit smoother. Uh, and my brain just doesn't have to do that conversion in my head. And you know what? I appreciate that. I do a lot of thinking throughout the day when it comes to building things. So it just saves me a little bit of time there. So I know there's a lot of great tape measures out on the market, but for me, 
this is one that I'll probably keep buying. There you have it guys, five tools that I kind of regret buying for this workshop and five that I would totally buy again. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing my take on some of these tools. If you did, make sure to like this video and let me know if you wanna see more videos like this in the future. If you wanna take a closer look at any of the items that I mentioned in the video, I'll leave them all, the good and the bad, linked in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you again soon. Bye.